Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Dane Johansson from Agros Reformed Baptist Church in Mesa, Arizona. Today, I wanted to make a video on the Puritans, what Puritan works to buy, what Puritan books to have in your library, my interaction with the Puritans, my history with the Puritans, how I have benefited from the Puritans. And this is a follow-up to the video I made on systematic theology. Uh, thank you all for leaving great comments, and I'm glad that it was of help to many of you. Uh, also, thank you for all the suggestions on videos to make uh, in the future, content to put on the, this channel in the future. And one of those uh, suggestions was make a video on the Puritans. What Puritan works should people have in their library? And so, in answering that, I, I'm going to look today at a few different Puritan works that I think people should have based on different categories of people, uh, what interest you might have in the Puritans. I'm going to recommend some works and kind of give an overview of the Puritans, what you're going to get out of the Puritans, what to expect from the Puritans. So, who were the Puritans? Well, in England from about 1550 to 1662 with the Act of Uniformity, the Great Ejection, where 2,000 plus Puritan ministers were thrown out, kicked out of their pulpits uh, for not conforming to the Anglican Book of Common Prayer. Uh, you can kind of narrow Puritanism down to that 100, 110 years or so. But I think above that, and in addition to that, you can also add in the Dutch Puritans, the Dutch for the Reformation divines, the Nadieri Reformatsi divines, who were very much in the spirit of English Puritanism, the Scotch Puritans, the Irish Puritans, the American Puritans. And really, Puritanism captures a spirit of a group of people that took the truths put forward during the Reformation and found in the Scriptures and brought them to bear on every aspect of life. And they didn't want to just go halfway with reforming the church. They wanted to purify the church in accordance with the Scriptures. And so these authors have had a lasting influence because of their ability and their desire to bring Scripture to bear on every aspect of human life. And that's why they've had such a great reception, both in their time and in ours, and pretty much throughout history since they uh, came on the scene. Now, Puritanism is kind of a, a, a misleading title and a misunderstood title in our day. People think it's almost like a cuss word. Oh, you're so puritanical. But actually, the Puritans, especially for Christians, if we're, if we're Christian, are going to be some of our greatest allies. Their literature, their writings, their theology, because, like I said, it brings the scriptures to bear on every aspect of our lives. And this is why many of the great men in history also, you know, think of Charles Spurgeon, you think of the Princetonian men, you think of so many others that have uh, George Whitfield, who have benefited from the Puritans, pointed to the Puritans, looked at the Puritans, uh, and, and loved the Puritans, and, and stood in line with their theology, and their heart, and their spirit. And so if you're wanting kind of a overview, this is for any of you, if you're if you're unfamiliar with the Puritans or you only have a few Puritan works and you just kind of have a cursory knowledge of the Puritans, I recommend typing in on a search engine and YouTube, Joel Beakey on the Puritans. You're going to find tons of lectures, videos, articles, resources from Joel Beakey who, uh, pretty much of any scholar, Joel Beakey has done the most work on the Puritans and sum, summating their thought in putting forth their thought and republishing them and synthesizing their thought and, and making it digestible and understandable and giving you historical background information of these men. So Joel Beakey on the Puritans is a great place to start, specifically his lectures and uh, many of his articles. In fact, here in this work that recently just came out, it's called Puritan Reform Theology by Joel Beakey. This is a series of essays, so it's a collection of essays from Joel Beakey, and it's not all on the Puritans, but there's a lot of stuff on the Puritans, and kind of in line with what I said, these essays represent his uh, spirit, which he has adopted, inherited, and, and, and taken from the Puritans into his own life and his own ministry. And in this, in chapter 8, on page 122, uh, he's got an essay called Reading the Puritans, where basically anything I say in this video is going to pale in comparison to it. I think you can also find the, uh, this essay online, as well as pretty much any of his lectures and talks on reading the Puritans and about the Puritans. 
Um, he's going to cover this same material. But he's going to give you an over, overview of who the Puritans were, what you're going to see when reading the Puritans, how to read the Puritans, what works to buy uh, from the Puritans, what books to invest in, and how to read them. So that's highly, highly recommended. I think that's a great starting point for any of you that are completely unfamiliar with the Puritans or have heard them referenced by your pastor or maybe your favorite authors and you're, you're wanting to know more about the Puritans and maybe you just have a, a couple of Puritan things. Is, is research Joel Beakey's work on the Puritans. So now let's look at the question, why read the Puritans? I think first and foremost, the Puritans stood in that great tradition of sola scriptura. I don't think you're going to find any group of authors that is going to deal with scripture more than the Puritans. They were Bible-obsessed, Bible-saturated. And if you open a Puritan work and just look at the page, there are not only direct quotations of Scripture, but also allusions to Scripture and Scripture references sprinkled across the entire page. They are Bible-saturated. So as you're reading the Puritans, you'll be reading Scripture. Uh, you'll have Scripture that is referenced that you can go then and look up. It's really a Bible-saturated experience in reading the Puritans. I think that's first and foremost. They were just as at home and familiar with Zephaniah and the, the other minor prophets and some obscure passages in the historical books of the Old Testament as they were in the Gospel of John and the, the Epistle to the Romans. These were men of the Bible. They were men who lived, breathed, and walked Holy Scripture and promoted Holy Scripture and exegeted Holy Scripture and explained Holy Scripture unlike pretty much any other group of authors that I have experienced or that I can think of. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're the end-all, be-all, again, of, of, of theologians or theology, or that their word should ever uh, overtake the scriptures. The scriptures are, are, are our final authority, but the Puritans realized this as well, and the Puritans stood on this and uh, really inherited uh, the spirit of that truth. The scriptures that the scriptures are our final authority, that the scriptures are life itself. And uh, they, they were great men of the Bible. I think that's probably reason one that you're going to benefit from reading the Puritans and why you should read the Puritans. Secondly, they were Christ-centered. They, uh, I forget which Puritan said it, but they said the goal in Bible reading and Bible study is to turn over every leaf in the Old or in the scriptures, turn over every leaf of the Bible and find Christ underneath it, find Christ in it. They saw Christ in Genesis. They saw Christ and his work in um, in the historical books and the minor prophets and, and the gospel of John. They, they saw Christ everywhere and they brought everything, all their doctrinal points they bought, brought back to the person of Christ, who Christ is, what Christ has done, who he is for us as Christians. They were Christ-centered. They were Bible-saturated. And because they were Bible-saturated, they were also Christ-centered. Thirdly, they were theologically rich. They did not shy away from theology. They saw that theology is life. Theology tells us how to live. Theology tells us how to worship God, how to live for God, how to love God, how to love each person of the divine Godhead, each person of the triune God. They brought theology to bear on life as well. I mean, from the Puritans, we have these great statements of faith, like the Westminster Standards, the London Baptist Confession of Faith, the Savoy Declaration of Faith, and many, many other great statements of faith and catechisms that they formulated. They were great men of theology, and they were theologically rich because they were Bible-saturated and Christ-centered. So you want to go for a place that you're going to get theology constantly talked about, go to the Puritans, go to the Puritans. And they weren't just dry, and that's number four. They weren't just dry, they were warm and devotional. They worded things in a way that uh, brought you to Christ, that stirred up your emotions and your heart to love Christ more. They could take the hypostatic union, a doctrine, a theological topic like the hypostatic union of Christ, the two natures of the one person of Christ, and make it warm and rich and devotional. They could talk about predestination and make it warm and rich and devotional and show how it should affect your heart, how it should affect your mind, how it should affect your life. They were warm. They were devotional. Number five, they were also practical and experiential. They were men who brought all of these theological topics, any theological topic that they touched, they not only lit on fire with, with, 
with devotion and warmth and, and love and joy, but then also showed how it experientially works out in the experience of the Christian life, how to practically live as a Christian. Uh, they touched on every issue you can think of, every case of conscience that you could think of, how to, how to, how to love Christ in the midst of trial, how to love Christ uh, as a husband, as a shopkeeper, as a, as, you know, a CEO, how to live the Christian life as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, as a father, as a king, as a magistrate, a ruler. They brought scripture to bear on every aspect of the Christian life, practically and experientially, what the Christian experiences in his own soul, what the human mind goes through, what the human heart and emotions go through. They brought the scriptures to bear on every one of those things. They left no stone unturned. They left no topic uncovered. They brought scripture and theology to bear in a rich, Christ-centered, Bible-saturated, warm, devotional way, practically to the lives of the people. And I think that is probably one of the main reasons that the Puritans still have such a lasting influence and still should have such a lasting influence is they were, they were practical. They were experiential. And lastly, number six, they were great authors. They had a way with words and diction. They, they always gave illustrations. They were all about plain preaching. And a thing to remember about the Puritan tomes that we have, the Puritan works and sets and books that we have, is that they were originally sermons. The vast majority of them were originally sermons given to the common people by pastors in their churches. And so they speak to the heart. They speak to the mind. They speak to the soul of the Christian and are constantly putting everything in pithy, easy-to-remember sayings and, and using illustrations and things from daily practical life that make the theological topics that they are talking about, the Bible, uh, come to life, as it were, uh, come immediately practical to the Christian life. So, uh, if nothing else, they are fantastic authors. They are great authors. They were wordsmiths. They knew how to use the, the English language to express pretty much anything that they were trying to express in a, in a seemingly perfect way, uh, a turn of phrase, um, what have you. They're, they're great authors, um, if nothing else. So that's number six. They were great authors. So why should you read, why should you read the Puritans? They were Bible-saturated, they were Christ-centered, they were theologically rich, they were warm and devotional, they're practical and experiential, and they are great authors. They're simply just great reading at the end of the day as well. So maybe you're wondering where to start with the Puritans and where the best place to start is with the Puritans. Maybe you're studying for the ministry, you're a young man studying for the ministry, you're an interested uh, layperson, you're somebody who... Uh, has just come to the Reformed faith, or you've seen uh, some of your favorite authors or uh, your, your pastor mentioning um, the Puritans and bringing up the Puritans and their names, and you want to sink your teeth into the Puritans, you want to get your feet wet, uh, kind of an introduction to the Puritans, where do you start? Where do you start reading? Well, I think probably most important is capturing the spirit of the Puritans and understanding who the Puritans were. So, this is an addition to what I said earlier about Joel Beakey, his ministry, his lectures, his videos and, and articles on the Puritans. A place you can start, a very practical book you can buy that's going to give you a taste of the Puritans is this book by Joel Beakey and Randall Peterson called Meet the Puritans with a Guide to Modern Reprints. And all this book is, is uh, I think a couple hundred mini, miniature, miniature biographies. So here's John Cotton. And it's going to go through uh, the Puritans, these authors, John Howe. It's going to give you little miniature biographies that are honestly, even the biographies are very rich. They're interesting. They're riveting. And it's going to tell you about them. And then at the end of it, it'll give you a, re uh, a guide to the reprints. So what, what, what books they publish. So here they're talking about the works of John Howe in three volumes, uh, who published it, where you can get it, and then they'll give you an overview of what that work contains. So even in just reading this book, you're reading about the Puritans, you're seeing their heart, their life, how they lived, and then also, here's the books they wrote and what the books are about. So even in just reading the summaries of the books, you're getting 
uh, you're getting some theological insight, you're getting some biblical insight, you're, you're studying the Puritans. And so this book is great. I think they sell it for like 29 30 bucks on Reformation Heritage Books. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, uh, things like this. But, you know, I got this and I devoured it. Um, this, this book is, is riveting. It's interesting. And they also go into the Scottish Puritans and the Dutch Puritans. And so there's a lot of information here. This is a great guide to have to understanding the Puritans, kind of uh, capturing that spirit of Puritanism that I was talking about and seeing how that fleshed out in their actual lives. And then also giving you a guide to their reprints, where you can buy their works and what each of those books is going to have in it. There's many other great overviews as well. Leland Riken has a book on the worldly saints, the Puritans as they were. I know um, J.I. Packer has some books on the quest for godliness and Puritan living and Puritan life. There's, there's lots of books on history and biographies of the Puritans. Again, I would say Meet the Puritans is the best one for getting a, a great overview, um, as well as the this book by Martin Lloyd-Jones. It was some of his lectures on the Puritans. Uh, you can get this from Banner of Truth. I'm sure Reformation Heritage Books sells it, and you can also get it on Amazon, I'm sure, as well. And so this will go in different Puritans and Puritan thought. It'll not just be biographical, but also talk about Lloyd-Jones, his, his experience with the Puritans, and his thoughts on the Puritans. And then kind of stepping in a little bit a little bit deeper is Puritan Reform Spirituality by Joel R. Beakey, this book. Uh, this is put out by Evangelical Press. Um, this book is going to be biographies, uh, the theology of the Puritans, and some Reformed authors as well, like John Calvin, uh, Theodore Beza. Uh, it's going to go into uh, guys that came after the Puritans and some of the Dutch Puritans. So this is going to be a great book for um, understanding the theology of the Puritans, the, the practical teaching of the Puritans on a number of topics as well. And then you also have books like Joel R. Beakey, his book, Heirs with Christ, the Puritans on Adoption. So speaking specifically on their, their doctrine of adoption, this is a, a quick read, 110 pages of, of fairly big font. Um, this is going to give you tons of quotes from the Puritans on uh, that specific subject. He also has one on Puritan evangelism. And then there's this book by Peter Lewis put out by Soli de Gloria Press. It's an older one, The Genius of Puritanism. Um, this book as well is going to give you uh, just an overview of how the Puritans taught, what they thought, lots of quotes from the Puritans. So it's broken up into three parts, the Puritan in the pulpit, so how they preached, what they preached about, how they viewed preaching. Part two will be the Puritan in the pew, so your average person in the pew and, and kind of what the Puritan service looked like and, and how the, the, the people in the pew, the, the, the lay people, uh, received the preaching and, and used the preaching. And then the Puritan in private, how they lived as Christians. Um, th there's a lot of other great books on overviews of the Puritans and, again, their history and biographies, but... I would say the most important ones uh, that I just showed for getting an introduction to the Puritans is Meet the Puritans by Joel R. Beakey that I showed, and then probably uh, Puritan Reform Spirituality. Uh, th those two books, if you read them and digest them, you're going to understand why people read the Puritans and why they should still be read and also know where to go from there as far as buying certain books, uh, buying certain works of the Puritans. All right, now I'd like to talk about taking your Puritan reading and Puritan study to the next level down. So this will be good for lay people and pastors as well. Um, I'd like to talk about a book that just came out, Or from the Puritans' Mind, which if you know, if you know anything about the Puritans, this is a very Puritanical title. It's compiled by Dale W. Smith. It's a, a, a quote book. So some of these quote books, and there's been many of them published uh, of Puritan quotations, are actually a great place to start. It's great devotional reading and great theological reading. And basically this book is broken up by topic, and then it has quotes from the Puritans, over 200 Puritan authors and something like 3,000 plus uh, quotations. It's broken up alphabetically by topic, and it has index to authors in the back, index to topics in the back, and 
reading this is is great because you're just going to get really brief, uh, sometimes lengthy quotations from the Puritans on a number of different topics. And so this is a great place to start. I think everyone should have this in their library. Their library. Um, I'm going to be using it a lot. Joel Beakey, who writes the introduction, says to just read it cover to cover. And uh, it's going to really bless your life. It's going to teach you a lot about the Puritans and what they thought. So this is a great place to uh, really just actually get into the Puritans. And, and you know, even if you didn't buy anything else than this, this is a great book to have. So I think lay people... Uh, pastors, everyone would really benefit from that book. You also have books like this. This is a Puritan paperback. Um, this was originally compiled by Charles H. Spurgeon. It's called Smooth Stones Taken from, Taken from Ancient Brooks. And this is a collection of quotations from Thomas Brooks, the Puritan. And these are some of Charles Spurgeon's favorite quotations from Brooks. I'll talk about Brooks in a moment. But he's one of the best Puritans for very practical, um, rich, devotional reading from the Puritans. Uh, and again, the Puritans had a, a way with words, for sure. Let me see if I can find a... Um, here's one on pride and the subtlety of pride and, and Satan. Pride grows with the decrease of other sins and thrives by their decay. Satan is subtle. He will make a man proud of his very graces. He will make him proud that he is not proud. So the, their way of writing and their diction is just, is just amazing. It's very memorable. Uh, it's very easy to, to quote and to um, apply to your life instantly. And so in that quotation, he's talking about being mindful that pride can pop up within us even when we're... Uh, growing in sanctification, that the more grace we have, the more we have learned to walk with Christ and crucify sin, that sin is always ready to pop up even then. That even when we are seeing, wow, the Lord has really worked in my heart and in my life to help me crucify and mortify and put to death sin and grow in sanctification and holiness, I'm doing really good. I am great. So even there, we have pride coming before or coming up out of our heart in that instance even. So he's saying Satan will use even the work God has done in our heart to cause us to be proud. So anyway, another great quote book from Charles Spurgeon who gathered a bunch of quotes from Thomas Brooks. Now, I did want to did want to mention this. He doesn't have uh, where you can find these quotes. They're just put on the page. Whereas, or from a Puritan's mind, I forgot to mention this, at the end of every quote that he gives you have the um, where you can find it, where you can find that quote. So you can go look it up yourself. And this is unadapted, unabridged. It's just straight what the Puritans said. He didn't change any of their wording. Another one by Spurgeon on a Puritan is called Flowers from a Puritan's Garden. These are quotations from the Puritan Thomas Manton. And then follow, followed by the quotation is Charles Spurgeon's thoughts as well. So this is another great one by Sprinkle Publications. So if you want to sink your teeth a little bit deeper into the Puritans, quote books, a great place to start. Also, stuff like this that's super practical. This is great for families. This is this is the Puritan William Googe, and this is a three-volume work. This is just one of the volumes. It's called Building a Godly Home, A Holy Vision for a Happy Marriage, and they have one on raising children and things like this. And so this has been lightly adapted and abridged by Joel Beakey, and I think another editor as well. That's a great place to start. Uh, if you're looking just for, you want to get Puritan works, uh, you can get something like this. Here's the Puritan paperbacks by Banner of Truth Publishing. These are the Puritan paperbacks, and these are going to be lightly abridged uh, works of the Puritans, uh, made a little bit more easy to read, a little bit more readable, up to, uh, up to date uh, English. So these are going to be great for for people. Um, I buy these and give them away to people for gifts, and um, I love to give them to people because they are a great place to start. And they're always on very practical, you know, subjects like the Puritans were constantly doing. Here's one: Thomas Watson, the Godly Man's Picture. Uh, Thomas Watson, um, Doctrine of Repentance. Thomas Watson, All Things for Good: How God Works All Things for Our Good. 
one I showed before is um, John Owen, The Mortification of Sin. And so these are a great place for people to, to start and to read if they don't want to buy these, these huge sets. You can buy tons of Puritan paperbacks and, and give them away. It's a, it's a massive uh, work. I don't know how many Puritan paperbacks they have now, but qu quite a few. You can also go a little bit, um, a little bit deeper with something like this. This is called Profiles and Reformed Spirituality, uh, edited by Joel B. Key. So here's one on Thomas Watson called The Habitual Sight of Him, The Christ-Centered Piety of Thomas Goodwin. It's going to have an, an introduction kind of talking about Thomas Watson, who he was, and his theology. And then it'll just have uh, quotations from the works of uh, Thomas Watson. So you're going to get a lot of really great things in there brief, quick, you can use them as a devotional. Going even going even deeper, you're going to have something like the Soli Deo Gloria publications of Puritan reprints, where they're going to be lightly abridged, lightly uh, updated uh, works, but faithfully. And so they're going to be, they have paperback and hardback, stuff like this, Heaven Taken by Storm by Thomas Watson, who's a, a very famous Puritan, stuff like The Art of Divine Contentment, um, the, the Penitent Pardoned by Christopher Love, uh, Gospel Remission by Jeremiah Burroughs, uh, A Treatise on Earthly Mindedness and the Dangers Thereof by uh, Jeremiah Burroughs, Charity and Its Fruits by Jonathan Edwards. So this is also a massive set. Some of them are out of print, um, but they're constantly reprinting new ones and reprinting ones that they've already printed in the past. So the Soli Deo Gloria little hardcover works on the Puritans and other Reformed authors is another place to just read uh, straight up Puritan writing. Sprinkle Publications, which unfortunately uh, is no longer in business because Lloyd Sprinkle passed away a couple years ago, will also print a lot of Puritan works, usually unabridged. So this is the Christian's Daily Walk by Henry Scudder. Henry Scudder, excuse me, just walking through and talking about how to live as a Christian. So you can get small works like this, smaller works like the Puritan paperbacks and the Soli Deo Gloria volumes if you're not interested in buying huge entire sets. And sometimes that's more profitable because it's a quick read and a great topic and you're going to get a lot out of that. So if you're not interested in buying huge sets or even if you have huge sets and want to buy huge sets but I would also recommend those smaller books like the Puritan paperbacks and the um, Soli Deo Gloria reprints of Puritan works. I think those are both uh, great for pastors, for lay people, for anyone. So Puritan quote books, uh, Puritan paperbacks, and Puritan reprints by Soli Deo Gloria I think is a great way to take it from the next level of just being interested in the Puritans and who they were to actually beginning to read the Puritans in a sizable manner. Okay, so going even a little bit deeper, this is for, I would think, motivated lay people as well as pastors, etc. Say you're really into the Puritans. You've read a lot about Puritans. You've listened to a lot of, of Puritans. Uh, you've bought some of those paperbacks, the Puritan paperbacks, and the Soli Deo Gloria reprints, and you're saying, I want to invest for my family, for myself, my own spiritual life in a Puritan set, a Puritan work. Um, you can start buying Banner of Truth sells entire sets, Reformation Heritage Books sells entire sets of Puritans where they basically take the entire works of a Puritan author and reprint it. There's, there's other sprinkle publications. You can find these used, you can find them new, um, but basically you want to find some authors and you want to read them. So you can buy entire sets, like here's the works of John Flavel, Volume 1. It's a six-volume set, but I want to bring out the whole thing and hold the whole thing. But here's, by Banner of Truth, the works of John Flavel. And so you're going to get everything he wrote. You know, this is Volume 1 on the Fountain of Life, opened on the person and work of Christ. Uh, they're going to cover all sorts of things. You're going to get all of their treatises, things that, you know, maybe are printed like this in Puritan paperbacks, but you can get the full unabridged work um, in type like this. Sometimes it's updated type, but it's going to be unabridged, in-your-face Puritans. And so maybe you want to buy the entire set of six volumes. You know, it's going to be pricey. It's going to set you back 
but also you can always just buy an individual volume one at a time but you know you can get guys like the the works of Thomas Brooks who's one of the most accessible Puritans immediately practical immediately devotional this is also a six volume work and this is just volume one again just grabbed one of them but you're gonna have everything in here like his precious remedies against Satan's devices uh, this is one of his tr most famous treatises on how to see the, the, the deception of Satan, the temptations of Satan, and how to combat them. And so he's very readable. So is John Flavel. These are both very readable authors. So maybe you can look up individual volumes out of their works and see which ones kind of interest you the most and will be most practical. But these are two of the most practical authors. Some of the other authors that are very practical are Richard Sibbs. You can get his works in seven volumes. John Bunyan, his work in three volumes. These are going to be Puritans, pretty deep reading, um, pretty expansive reading. But they're going to be some of the more practical authors. And then you have guys like John Owen, who's called the Prince of the Puritans. And he's got 16 volumes in his works, plus the seven on Hebrews right here behind my right shoulder. And he's just written a mountain of theology. And um, some of his writings are very difficult. And then others like this on communion with God are going to be very practical. So if you're a lay person, you're just an interested lay person, uh, a motivated lay person, I would say if you're, if you're interested in John Owen, buy individual volumes of the works. Don't buy the, buy, buy the whole 16 volumes. Um, buy ones that are going to be some of his more practical writings um, and that can apply to all of these guys but specifically you know if you were to buy the full works of Thomas Brooks you're going to be doing really good and really fine whereas if you buy the full works of John Owen there's going to be lots of stuff and then it's very difficult to read a lot of Latin a lot of Greek a lot of Hebrew um, it's going to be hard reading now I think it repays but John Owen is called one of the hardest uh, considered one of the hardest Puritans to read um, it said that he was so good at Latin that he actually thought in Latin while re while writing in English. So he thought in Latin, but wrote in English, and it kind of made it a little bit more difficult in reading some of his English. Another place to start if you're an interested lay person is the Christian's Reasonable Service. Or not to start, but if you want to go to this next deeper level, the Christian's Reasonable Service, it's in four volumes. Um put out by Reformation Heritage Books. I think you can get it for like 80 bucks, 90 bucks. Beautiful, sewn, binding. That's going to last a lifetime. Very practical. So it's a systematic theology, essentially, but it's it's super practical. He's always going to have, um, always going to have, let me see if we can find a page where he goes into it. So he's talking about the essence of God, who God is, his attributes, uh, but then there's always going to be a section on how to improve it, uh, the uses of it. And like the duty of the Christian to reflect on the attributes of God and how to apply this to your life. Directions for reflecting on the attributes of God is on this page. So you're going to find very practical stuff. And he's a Dutch Puritan, so not technically an English Puritan, but still in that same spirit and heart and same time period as the Puritans. Wilhelm Hassan Brockel, if you want something that you can read for the rest of your life, um, something like that. You also have works like this, A Body of Divinity by Thomas Watson, one of the most readable and enjoyable and immediately practical Puritans. This is his sermons on the um, Westminster Shorter Catechism. So you're going to have things like that that are immediately, pra uh, immediately practical. Um, you also have A Puritan Theology by Joel R. Beakey and Mark Jones. And this is going to walk you through the theology of the Puritans. These are essays by modern guys walking through different topics of theology that the Puritans covered on. Lots of quotes from the Puritans helps you understand their thinking and their specific theological articulations, as well as a section at the end of 10 chapters on the Puritans practically relating to your life. Uh, you can always find a work or an author, too, that you're just going to devote your time reading to. He's going to be the guy you read the most of. Here's a, The Christian's Reasonable, or I'm sorry, The Christian in Complete Armor by William Gurnall. This was my first Puritan work. It's my favorite Puritan work. I've, I've read it and continue to reread it and reread it and reread it. It is my favorite Puritan work by far. 
Um, it's about warfare against Satan, and uh, within that, he comments on basically everything. It's essentially a massive sermon series on the full armor of God in Ephesians 6. So, you can get a Puritan set, or maybe some volumes from different Puritan sets, and, and really dive in to the Puritans headlong, or get overviews of you know Puritan theology, things like this. So this is the motivated layperson. Also, this applies, obviously, to pastors, etc., etc. All right, lastly, I'm going to address pastors, elders, deacons, church leaders, seminary professors. In uh, buying the Puritans uh, and, and getting the Puritans, recommending the Puritans, I think pastors should be the ones who collect entire sets, um, entire sets of commentaries by a lot of the Puritans. It doesn't mean the Puritans are never wrong. I disagree with the Puritans on a host of things as a Reformed Baptist. Um, you know, I believe in independency. I believe in uh, believer's baptism by immersion. So there's lots of areas I disagree with the Puritans and uh, lots of areas that even uh, Presbyterians and Pado baptists uh, disagree with certain Puritan authors. So the Puritans were not perfect, um, but I think the Puritans had the Holy Spirit poured upon them uh, in a way. It was a move of God, Puritanism was, uh, that has pretty much been unparalleled. And their writings are going to really help you in your ministry. They're going to cover every possible issue you could think of that you're going to encounter personally in your ministry. They're going to inform your preaching. They're going to help your preaching. They're going to help you think through biblical theology and systematic theology and historical theology and how to exposit the word and apply it to your people especially is where they're going to be pure gold. So as I mentioned before, you know, some of these sets, you know, you can buy individual volumes from, but I would say collect the Puritans and read the Puritans. Collect entire sets of the Puritans. Get, get authors that are going to challenge you theologically like John Owen, as well as ones that are going to uh, be immediately practical like Thomas Brooks and John Flavel. Save up and buy the entire works of some of these great Puritans. Uh, one that Banner of Truth just reprinted, and this is a solid ground Christian books edition, is the 22 volumes of Thomas Manton. For the preacher, there are few Puritans that are more helpful to you than Thomas Watson, or, or Thomas Manton, sorry. Very few Puritans are more useful to the pastor than Thomas Manton because he was, at the end of the day, a preacher par excellence. He preached and preached and preached and pretty much all of his uh, volumes are sermons. And there's great indexes in the back, um, indexes in the back that are going to give you where passages are. So oftentimes if I'm working on a passage uh, for sermon preparation, I will go see what Thomas Manton says. And honestly, I don't do that enough because he's always got great stuff. So buy uh, entire works of the Puritans as much as you can and then read them. Again, not that they were perfect, not that they were you know, always accurate and always correct in their thoughts and in their theology, but they're always going to be helpful. And we should return to the old paths. So much of this modern stuff, even where it's good, modern works of theology, even when they're good, are still shallow in comparison to the Puritans. You're going to have to chew strong meat when you read the Puritans. And so buy overviews of the Puritans, some of the ones I've mentioned before. Buy biographies on the Puritans and histories of the Puritans. Buy theological overviews of the Puritans, like Puritan Theology, A Doctrine for Life by Beakey and Mark Jones. Um, buy all sorts of those kinds of things, as well as the Puritan works. Uh, behind me, I have many Puritan works scattered throughout my commentaries. When, you, when you're a pastor and you're preaching through a book expositionally and you're buying commentaries and collecting commentaries to use, you know, get a modern commentary, maybe. Um, I think you should, so you can see temp, uh, contemporary issues and things like that. But always, if you can, buy a Puritan commentary on that same book if it's available. So if you're getting Hebrews, a lot of people like F.F. Bruce. I have F.F. Bruce if I need to consult him, but also get Owen's massive seven volumes. You can see them right there over my right shoulder, those orange volumes, orange and white. That's his seven volumes on Hebrews. Uh, also William Googe. You can get William Googe on Hebrews. So when you're looking at a commentary, especially the Old Testament, they have lots of great commentaries, get a Puritan 
commentary and a Puritan work and work through that in addition to just some modern work or, or Calvin or anything like that, um, get Puritan commentaries. Obviously, there's the great commentator, Matthew Henry, the Puritan, uh, later, Puritan later Puritan, but still a Puritan. Uh, you read his commentary, you're, you're going to see. <laughs> you're going to see how practical, how amazing they were in applying the word to the hearts of the people. And as a pastor, you're not there to just give doctrine um, in your sermon. You're not there to just give theology. You're there primarily to apply the theology of the passage to the hearts of your people and their practical daily life. Uh, in addition to that, you should read the Puritans on preaching. So you have The Best Method of Preaching by Petrus von Maastricht, who was a Dutch Puritan. Uh, this is this same little volume is contained in volume one of his uh, dogmatics, so you can get that. There's The Art of Prophesying. Uh, this is a Puritan paperback by William Perkins, and this is also contained in volume nine of Puritan... Or, uh, this is contained in volume nine of William Perkins' works that was recently republished by Reformation Heritage Books. So this is a book on the art of prophesying. Prophesying, he means preaching, how to preach, how to prepare sermons, how to use scripture. There's lots of books like this that have, you know, Encouragement for Today's Pastors, Help from the Puritans by Joel Beakey. Um, they're going to walk you through how the Puritans viewed preaching and pastoral ministry. You have books like The Reformed Pastor by... Richard Baxter, and by reformed, he meant conformed to the scriptures. He's reformed according to the scriptures uh, that are going to show you how to counsel, how to catechize your people, etc., etc. Another book is by Joel Beakey, Reformed Preaching. This is going to give you an overview of Puritan preaching, experiential preaching, essentially. Uh, it's going to go into some of you know the, the reformers as well, but you know it's going to have a huge section on Puritan preachers, you know, Goodwin and Shepherd, and then after that you have uh, Puritan preachers, Bunyan, um, and then Introduction to the Dutch for the Reformation guys. So books like this that are going to show how the Puritans uh, bear, uh, bring the word to bear on uh, preaching and on ministry and homiletics and uh, exegesis, uh, things like that. So if you are a minister, a deacon, an elder, uh, by the Puritans, read the Puritans because you were on the front lines ministering to God's people and preaching the word and uh, serving God's people. So by the Puritans, read the Puritans. Again, so much of modern stuff, even when it's good, is fluff, I think. And uh, the Puritans were not fluff. They were deep. They were rich. They were practical, Christ-centered, biblically saturated, uh, unlike pretty much any other time in history, in my opinion. So hopefully that was helpful, gives you kind of an overview of some works to buy and who should buy works. I mean, if there's a really motivated lay person that wants to buy all the Puritan works and read them, that's great. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't if you're a lay person, but I think for lay people generally, hopefully your pastor has a great appreciation for the Puritans. Uh, ask him what books to get. Buy the Puritan paperbacks, buy quote books, buy overviews of the Puritans, uh, and read them as you have time. And they will show you how to bring scripture to bear and live all of life for Christ's glory, for God's glory, for Christ's crown and covenant, and how to uh, apply scripture in every instance of life. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions for more videos, please leave them in the comments as well. So thank you guys and God bless.